Hey fellow gamers, thanks for checking out my channel, Battle Knights. Um, of course you know that, because you clicked on it already. <laughs> uh, I'm going to give you a, summer, a little update on how my progress is going on my Halflings. So I've been working on a new army now during lockdown. Uh, I wanted to try something a little different, uh, but still stick to the same. I love myself uh, some humanoid f armies. Uh, that I like the sort of... The, the, the hardships that the humans have to suffer against all these powerful races like orcs and chaos and ogres and trolls and things like that it, it's what I like uh, but I also like the dark age medieval fantasy so these these rule sets work well for me so what I'm going to show you is my halfling army in the two sort of lineups for the two games that I'm preparing the army for so the one game is Warlords of Erewhon this is from uh, Warlord Games uh, authored by Rick Priestley who also obviously did Bolt Action which is a big favorite of mine I really like the dice activation system in that so the idea behind that is to give that a try I've not actually played a game of that yet but I've watched a couple of battle reports online and uh, I think I think it'll work uh, obviously you'll see the army now I've worked out a, a roughly a thousand point army list for that and we'll add more to that in the future uh, and then I'm also going to be doing from Osprey Games Dragon Rampant um, which is penned by Daniel Mercy. Uh, I'm a big fan of Lion Rampant. You can check out my Lion Rampant battle reports if you follow the link up here to the playlist. Um, but yeah, uh, I, I like Lion Rampant. It's fun. It uh, it's can be a little frustrating, obviously, when you fail the orders time after time. It's more, you know, tongue in cheek kind of game. But I enjoyed it. I had a really good time playing it, you know, when we were doing videos a year ago. So, um, so I'm going to get some hopefully my halflings on the table with that I'll show you how the force looks for that and how they combine so I'm using the same models and the same army for both rule sets and I'm going to try and do that for more rule sets uh, I've got my eye on Saga from um, Gripping Beast uh, but using the Age of Magic system and um, I obviously I can use Age of Sigmar as well I don't know if there's a Age of Sigmar a halfling army um, but you, know, you can comment below, let me know, point me in the right direction. But the idea is to have one force and then just alternating here and there, taking a unit out, bulking a unit up, with uh, depending on how the rules work. So it's not necessarily about building the strongest competitive army, but one army that I could use in multiple game systems and have fun for the various game systems in what they offer. Um, and if obviously if you know any others. So there's that. Anyway. That's enough of me rambling. Let's have a look at the army, and I'll hopefully I'll put some pictures up at the end as well, so you can see little close-ups. They're not done. I mean, I, I, I kind of like uh, I'll paint a bit of this, I'll paint a bit of that, and then once it gets to everything's painted and paste and there, then I go back again and add little details to all the little bits, like tattoos and gems and things like that. So even the units that look like they're fully painted are not finished yet. I'm kind of a little bit of a scatterbrain I like jumping around and this is also in the background of what I'm painting for other people so this is my downtime if you like I'm painting this anyway let's get let's have a look so first we're gonna have a look at the army and how it would line up for Dragon Rampant Dragon Rampant's a little fantasy war game rules from Osprey Games designed or written by Daniel Morrissey and it's a, a smaller smaller scale game Generally, 24 points is what you would use in a game. I've laid it out here, and uh, I'll put up pictures later on in the video, or maybe slot them in the top somewhere of the individual units, so you can get a little close-up view of it. As you can see, it's not fully painted yet. Just giving you an update on how this is working out. But, um, this is my halfling army that I'll be using in Dragon Rampant rules, as laid out here. So, first of all, we've got a unit leader. The unit leader would replace one of the um, light foot over here. So we've got a unit of light foot. Uh, 12 models with command. Not that that makes much of a difference in line rampant. Uh, if you're not familiar with line rampant, hopefully I'll get some battle reports up once this uh, lockdown ends. And um, it, But it's very similar to line rampant and my videos on line rampant on you are a good indicator of how the game plays. But it'll replace one of those models in there uh, as my leader. I've got the, the sorcerer out here at the moment. This will be a spellcaster. So, for example, I could replace one of the models in there with this and then add plus four points to the army 
to give them the spellcaster ability. So this is kind of a question mark model right here. Uh, if I want to play a bigger game or something or replace something in the army. But as it stands, without this model, it's 27 points, which is slightly bigger than normal. Uh, but 27 points is a good value game. Uh, the army will consist of obviously my general, which will replace one of the models in the lightfoot units, and then we have a lightfoot. I went with lightfoot um, because they're halflings, uh, even though you know they're ferocious halflings. Uh, they, um, I'm not going to do that much damage in close combat against bigger things like orcs and undead and it's all of that sort of stuff. So they rely a lot about combined arms. At least that's the way I look at it in my head. Uh, light missile unit over here. Uh, it's just a crossbow unit with light crossbows. But then I've got a bolt thrower unit on this side. Um, and this is going to be a heavy missile unit. So there's no real artillery or bolt throwers in Dragon Rampant. So what I've done is this is what you call a reduced model unit. So instead there should be 12 models like that. But instead I've got two bolt throwers with um, so they would have six wounds each. And I'd represent maybe represent taking off clue, crew or just you know two two wounds per crew or just add dice to add the number of wounds each model's taken and once it's taken to six remove a whole thing and then you've got one left. So I've got two ranged units there, light and heavy, one light foot infantry unit. Uh, obviously my characters over here, and then we got some heavy riders. Now I oomed and ah about whether I want to make a light riders or heavy riders. Light riders are predominantly a ranged unit in Dranged Rampant, and they sort of skirmish around the board, firing off, moving away, that sort of thing. But because these guys are on goats, and uh, you know, goats can hit quite hard, especially when they're on the full charge, and you see them in you know the Hobbit movie with the the dwarves coming on their goats. So. I've upgraded them to heavy riders. That gives them four four points each, six models each, and I get to use both units. Eventually, I'll get them painted. They won't be on these bases. Uh, these are just for while I'm painting when I'm painting them. But um, the problem I'm having at the moment, for example, in my line ramp, in my line rampant unit, I have based my cavalry on these sort of oval pull size bases. I quite like them for cavalry, especially in this size uh, games. I had a look at them on there and they look quite small. They, you know, like they're tiny little models on this larger base. I could put them on larger round bases, um, but I don't know. I've got to decide. If you have any thoughts, please comment below what you think. Should I just stick to the regular weapon of regular sort of base of those? Or should I go for slightly larger round base like the infantry are based on? Or should I just... I don't know. You know, like, I'm thinking of the Lord of the Rings. You know, they all the cavalry are based on, on the round sort of 25 mil bases sort of thing. That's what I'm kind of thinking. But, I don't know. I like to have the differentiate between um, the infantry and the cavalry. So, therefore, I wanted them to go on those sort of oval shaped bases. I might still go with the oval show bases. I'll see when I get closer to that point. Anyway, so there's two heavy riders there um, with six models each. Um, and then I've got the monster stuff. So the easy one was this one over here, the three bears. Um, so we've got the like, basically a lesser war beast unit with a reduced model count. So they've got two wounds each effectively because they're supposed to be six models. But you can do it reduced. So they go two wounds each before they get reduced down. But then I've got the cockatrice over here. And I was umming and ahhing of whether to make it a greater war beast. Because it's only the one model. But I don't know. Based on the size of the model. And the fact that it's on the same size basis as the bears. I went with a lesser war beast. Except that it's obviously a really reduced model count. It's all only one model on its own. So all six wounds are straight on that thing. I think it'll work fine. I mean, I've got another model uh, coming, which is uh, another cockatrice, and I've got the one from the Joan of Arc box as well. I don't have that on hand, otherwise I could have showed you that. Uh, and they are much bigger, uh, so I might replace this one with a bigger cockatrice, and then make it a great to war beast. That will also pump up the points a bit. So we're looking at you know 29 points or 28 or 30 points instead of the 27 that it is now. But, 
that's for a later date. Uh, I'm going to concentrate on this at the moment. Once this is all painted up, and obviously lockdown is finished, we can get to playing some games. I might play some games with my family in the meantime anyway, just to get into the familiarity of the games again. Uh, but this will be my 27 to 30 point warband for Dragon Rampant. Uh, I don't have any plans on adding anything else to it as yet. Uh, as you'll see, I'll, I'm going to just change it around for the Dra for the Warlords of Erewhon, and then I'm going to have a look at um, Saga Age of Magic and see what goes on there. But, you know, obviously I could add more infantry, you know, have another light infantry unit, uh, maybe another light ranged unit, uh, maybe a different type of cavalry unit, maybe a different type of lesser war beast unit, maybe something completely different, like you got obviously the option for Bellicuous Foot, which is a completely different type thing. And that's actually another thing I was thinking of making them, because they're kind of Viking-y and barbarian-y, I was tempted to make them a Bellicuous Foot, but they're quite armoured, so I went with Light Foot. Okay. So, that is my 27 point warband for Dragon Rampant. Let's have a look at Warlords of Erewhon. Alright, so now we can have a look at the composition of the army for Warlords of Erewhon. This is obviously from Warlord Games and designed by, or written by Rick Priestley. Okay, so this is how the force looks. As you can see, it almost looks identical to the Dragon Rampant one. The only difference is, um, in the Warlord of Erewhon, you can only have one unit of mounted riders. So, unfortunately... I had to drop the second unit um, and then of course their model units for infantry are 10 so I've had to take two away from each of those because in Dragon Rampant there are 12 model units but you can see yeah the sheriff or in this case the halfling chief sheriff which you have to have in a, in a halfling army for warlords um, he's there and then he has his bodyguard of five dudes and I've just taken the extras from there and added to that so that works for me. Uh, the wizard is in. It's a fortune teller. You can have extras, uh, bodyguards and stuff like that. But I don't have any extras at this point. So she's on his own. And then we have the halfling sheriffs over here. I've upgraded them with um, light armor and swords. Because they're obviously armed that way. Wizzy rig. And then <laughs> I say that immediately. But this is the halfling archer unit. But they, of course, have crossbows. Well, uh, given them the dead eye rule, and then we have the mounted halflings over there. Um, they are plus one armor, and obviously got the extra mounted figures. I always maxed out the units as well, builds up the points and uses all the models I have. And then the bolt throwers, they do actually have um, artillery in this game, so those are two separate light bolt throwers. And then finally, down to the monsters. We have a cockatrice, which will be that one, and three separate cave bears. And that comes up to roughly a thousand points. I think it's about five points short. And I'm pretty happy with that, actually, to begin with. Obviously, um, Dragon Rampant is a, a very small skirmish game. And it, works more, it works better at the between the 24 and 30 point mark. And as you saw, the army was actually bigger than this one which is at a thousand points i know the points are completely not comparable but this is i would say a small scale game for warlords of everyone uh, so i might add some more stuff to this obviously the downside is i can't add any more cavalry uh to the army because of the rules the special rules that they have so the other unit of goat riders are no good um but i would have to add, probably add some more of the basic infantry units and obviously they got the you can have a dude in a sheriff like a sheriff in a cart those type of things so that's kind of what i'm looking at for this but at the moment i'm just going to get what i have now built and painted have both games played play and enjoy both facets of what rules are like from there and then i'll move on to a third rule set which is what i'm thinking hopefully will be comparable which is the saga age of magic rules um if age of sigma is also another one i could try i haven't looked into it properly yet um but it works i think predominantly the same they're all round bases and most of this can be fitted in somehow into the rules but there you go so that's the update on my halfling army uh i'll have some more armies in the future the idea is that i want to get as many armies as i can uh painted and then usable in many games i like playing different games 
Because each game, I never feel like there's a perfect game that I love. I always love playing games that um, give me a variety of different things. So some games, I might like how the combat systems work or the choices you get for movement or that sort of things. Uh, but some of the, like say the magic and the shooting, I'm not really happy with. Well, not, not happy with, but you know, in another game it does better than that. Or sometimes they just give you a different feel. Like for example, I love bolt action. So and the dice activation system in that is so clever and interesting that warlords of Erewhon would hopefully give me that same sort of feel but then of course uh, the um ordered activation system of dragon rampant which is sometimes frustrating but also really amusing um works well as well anyway uh, i hope you enjoyed that uh, i'll have more updates in the future and hopefully some battle frauds reports coming up and eventually when we can go back to events and things like that that'll be cool as well and I'll show some showcases of the armies when they're done. So I'll have a showcase of the full Halfling army when it's done. And then I'll probably move on to another army while I'm playing with this one. I'll be painting another one in the background. And I'll probably show some of my previous armies as well. Like I've got my Americans for my bolt action. Uh, I've got my Empire army, which I've been using for Kings of War. And obviously Warhammer Fantasy. And um, now I can also use it in Oathmark. So I like variety <laughs> anyway speak to you guys later